All right, had a sister send me this email, and uh, it's upsetting that some guy would mess with her like this. Uh, she says, Hi, Brian, I, in 1 Corinthians 7, is there a polygamy command from God? Here's a link that can explain what I'm asking better. What this says feels wrong to me. Polygamy commanded of God in New Testament. Exegesis, biblical polygamy .com. <laughs> You know, why not? I mean, it's just everything that's wicked is just out in the open now. I met this guy after being single for the last 15 years. He is trying to get me to marry him so I will have sex, and he also wants polygamy. When I said no, he started accusing me of following a false gospel, that I should please the Lord and obey my husband. This guy is clearly a nut and even demands that I tell him I love him. I told him to take a hike, but I wanted to know what you say on the polygamy claim in the New Testament being allowed. Uh, Crystal is her name. I'm not going to share her last name. But... Uh, I was like, okay, I really haven't heard much about this. So you go to the website here, bi Biblical Polygamy. You know, yeah, okay. And uh, he says uh, here, there is there absolutely is an example in the Bible. Let me zoom in a little bit more so we can read this. Uh, where God actually does command a situation of polygamy in the New Testament even. No, he doesn't. In 1 Corinthians 7, the Apostle Paul differentiates when he is making his own recommendation and when he is expressing the commandment of the Lord. Um, so, you know, it goes down through here. I'm not going to read all this. You can read this if you want to waste your time. Um, that uh, He's talking about the thing about a divorce, essentially, in the thing. Now, here's where he gets into it. He says, accordingly, the husband is, of course, still free to marry another wife. The fact is further proved by the later verses of 27 to 28d. Art thou bound unto a wife, seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife, seek not a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. All right, now, right there, this is talking about being loosed from a wife means divorced. All right, and then check this out. The Greek text of verse 27 is clearly only addressing married men whether or not the wife has departed. Oh, he has to go to the Greek. Anytime they have to depart from the King James and say the clear English of the King James Bible, he's quoting the King James Bible, but he's got to depart from it and go back to the Greek. Get ready, it's a con artist game coming up. As such, the married man whose wife is still with him does not sin when he marries another wife. Huh? Wait a second here. As such, the married man whose wife is still with him. It says, loosed from a wife. Uh, how does that work? You know, herein comes the commandment of the Lord of polygamy, as in the following situation. A believer de wife departs from her hu uh, believer husband. She is commanded of God to remain unmarried, per verses 10 through 11. Her husband, however, then subsequently marries another wife, who is not another man's wife. The husband and the new wife have not sinned, per verses 27 to 28. The departed wife then seeks to be reconciled back to her husband. In that situation, verses 10 through 11 show the following instruction as the commandment of the Lord. The husband is commanded of God to let the departed wife be reconciled back to him, and he is commanded of God to not put away a wife, including the new wife. What? <laughs> you know, it's just like, are you kidding me? Loosed means divorced. It doesn't mean you've just kind of just put her away there just a little bit, you know, and then you can, then you, when you get another, you know, woman, then you can hey, come on back in here. I mean, you know, see, here's the thing. Okay. I understand the mind of a lot of these perverts and stuff. Perverts will do whatever it takes to justify their sin. Absolutely. That's what they'll do. That's what's going on here. He's burning with lust. He wants to have more than one woman. I have no idea if the guy does or not. I'll show you a little bit more information on him uh, here in just a couple minutes. But he's a pervert, sex pervert. And he's trying whatever he can to how to twist Scripture and things like this. It's not at all what the Scripture is saying. If you are loosed from a wife, you are divorced. You don't take your wife back. You make the decision, okay, she's we're loosed here. You know, the, the scriptural grounds for divorce is... Um, you know, man's not to put away his wife except it be for fornication, all right? If she's joined herself to another man, then you say, okay, you divorce her. You put her away. And by the way, let me just make the point. Um, when has there ever been a polygamist that has gone out and said, okay, I want to marry two wives, so I'm going to get married first, and then I'm going to, you know, separate from her, put her away, I'll be loosed from her, then I'll get my second wife, and then I'll bring them back, you know, together. They don't do it that way. 
So again, he's just twisting the scriptures and wouldn't even follow it, even if it taught that, which it doesn't. Stupid. But let's just look here at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, beginning in verse 1, where he doesn't want to. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. That sounds like one to me. And look at this. Let every man have, or let every woman have her own husband. Um, wait a second. If there's two wives, how can they each have their own husband? Uh, uh, yeah, that's a problem. But it gets worse. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Singular. The wife. Now, let's go into happy polygamy land here for just a minute. Uh, we'll just say a guy named um, uh, Sam. Okay? Sam, I'm trying to think of a name that I don't think any of my subscribers are named Sam. If there is, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Sam and uh, Wilma, we'll say, is one of the wives. And um, uh, um, I don't know what, Teresa. Okay, hopefully I haven't used any, any of your names. <laughs> so Sam, Wilma, Teresa. Now Wilma, she has a need. She um, says, uh, hey, defraud not here, you know, for me, husband, I have a need. Wilma is like that. But Teresa has a need at the same time. Uh, how does that work out? Two women, one man. Can't all come together at the same time because that would be, you know, some kind of an orgy or maybe it wouldn't. And this guy's warped mind. Maybe it would be perfectly acceptable. To have, you know, two, three, four women at the same time. It'd be biblically justified, apparently. <laughs> no, it's called perversion. The guy's a sex pervert. He's a dirty sex pervert is what he is. But uh, let me show you a couple other things here real quickly. Um, you say, what about where the Bible says about one wife? The husband of one wife. Let's, let me just show you here real quickly. Uh, First Timothy chapter 3, the instructions for a bishop. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. One wife. One. Okay. Vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Now what's little uh, wingnut boy here? This guy, what's he do with that? Um... Titus 1, 6 and 1 Timothy 3, 2 and 12 says one wife. Mia is the Greek word from which the word one was translated in those passages. We've got to go to the Greek. Yet it can be translated as first. Just as it is, for example, so translated in the phrase, phrases first day of the week. Then he gives some scriptures there. Again, we're talking about uniform translation. This is so It's so easy to make the Greek text, this Greek thing, Teach what you want. Okay, you can go with different uh, uh, lexicons and things where people are defining the words differently. You know, you go to Thayer's lexicon. Thayer was a Unitarian, wasn't even saved. You can go to these guys that define Greek words. You can get their different different definitions. You can take this Greek word can be translated however many different ways, and you can say, well, see, it could be in there like that. First could just mean, or one could mean first. Ding, you know. <laughs> Uh, furthermore, in 1 Timothy 5, 9, widows, one man is not Mia, but the Greek word he is whatever, meaning the numeral one and not meaning the adjective, adjective of first. <laughs> this guy so desperate. It cracks me up. There's so much more to this particular matter here than that which this soundbite here can address. Mm -hmm. The organization of truthbearer.org provides a number of detailed articles on this issue, a couple of which include breaking past the one-wife barrier. <laughs> Uh-huh, the elders, bishops, and deacons trap. The fact is, no one can insist that these three one-wife verses cannot be instead translated as first wife, which makes more sense to translate these verses as first wife anyhow, or anyway. Really? Makes more sense to translate it as first wife? Let's look at this. 
The bishop then must be blamed as the husband of first wife. That's not even good English. The husband of first wife. How does it make more sense to translate it that way? Unless you're a pervert that's burning with lust and trying to justify your sin. Um, but let's just let's just go with this philosophy, okay? The husband of well, you can't say first wife, so um, you have to. We'll just add the word his. We're adding to scripture and changing it, so why not add some more? You know, uh, the husband of his first wife. We'll just say that, or however you would try to fit that in there to make it work. Um, think about this. Wouldn't a first wife mean Juan? You know, uh, Sister Catherine is my first wife. One wife. It still means one. Okay? You say, well, it could mean two. Then it would say first and second wife or first and more wives, the husband of a first and more wives. But this is the this is the idiot right here, Mark Hinkle. He's speaking at Yale. Oh, oh wow. You know, how dare I speak against him? I mean, he must be just the most intelligent man that ever lived, you know. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Let's go to links here, I think is where it goes. Um... Truth bearer. Is this the truth? You know, this is we'll go to truthbearer.org. Um uh, No, I don't think this is the one. Support the right for polyg or support the fight for polygamy rights over here. You make sure you donate there. He's got a whole big thing on that. Um you gotta join today, is it? Oh yeah. Support polygamy now. Become a Truth Bearer member today. Obtain access to the Truth Bearer members area. Let me just zoom in here so we can see this better. Um, listen online to some of the recorded media interviews. Obtain a pro polygamy passport. Oh, that's important. You know, participate on the members only email list subject to good behavior. Members only. Uh, like Richling would do, you know. You gotta have the members only area and stuff like this, yeah. Uh let's see. Have a website hosted at no extra charge. If you want one, well that's important. Be informed of news info before anyone else. Be truthfully funding the polygamy rights calls. Be a proven supporter of polygamy. Membership rates. Uh, you can get uh, thirty bucks a month or eighty dollars for every six months. What a what a wonderful deal there. But uh let's see. I'm trying to think of where the um, let me see if I gotta I gotta find this thing, and uh, I, I thought thought this was interesting. He also copyrights some of his articles. Like okay, that's kind of odd. Uh, this the thing. Can't remember. I got into this one page. Let me just look see if I can find it here. <clears throat> Own the DVD that made history. Fifty bucks for that piece of junk. You know, and that's something. Speaking at Yale, well, that's important. Yale old skull and bones and all kinds of other secret societies. All right, found it. Just had to go to Google, do a Google search of Mark Henkel, and it comes up with National Polygamy Advocate Mark Henkel. Right there, it takes you to this website. And there's this nutcase. <clears throat> Mark Henkel is a history-changing iconoclast. No pride there, okay? But check this out. Look at this. Mark Henkel is a pro-marriage, pro-woman, pro-Bible Christian. How can he be a pro-woman? Okay? Polygamy is ridiculous to women. Because he is not Mormon, Muslim, or lascivious, he has, not, he has been able to succeed where others could not. That is what cap, called about, that catapulted him to the national stage to represent all forms of unrelated consenting adult polygamy, from secular polygamy to Christian polygamy to blah, blah, blah. Um, having performed so many interviews over the years with all forms of media, big and small, Mark Henkel is perfectly com comfortable doing what he does, whether giving a speech at Yale or talking with famous TV hosts. He's a wingnut. 
Uh, someplace on here it says that he is, uh, what was the thing? He's cross-denominational. Okay, found it. Uh, see if I can show you here the truthbearer.org thing. Over here it says, Polygamy Intro to this Ever-Growing Cross-Denominational Movement of Bible-Based Christians. Not Bible-believing, Bible-based. Yeah, gotta love that. But let me just show you two other arguments here from Scripture. Uh, who was the, the greatest polygamist? Uh, more women than anybody else ever. That would be King Solomon. Let's see what he has to say about his uh, wonderful polygamy. Right? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God, pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this have, ha, have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Though this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Look at this. A woman among all those have I not found. What's he talking about? He had a thousand women to choose from. Seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines. And he couldn't find one good one. And he ends up saying here after all this thing, I find more bitter than death the woman. Um, let me just clue you in on something here. Why is it that he couldn't find one good woman out of 1,000? Because of polygamy. You're never going to find a good woman if there's other women in your marriage competing for your attention. You know what you'll find out as, as a married man? You'll find out that your wife has a lot of problems. And you do too, by the way. Uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that do with good. They're all going out of the way. Yeah, that's true. And marriage is about a husband and a wife working together, getting to know each other, communicating, you see, and helping one another in their walk with Jesus Christ. That's what you're going to find out. But how can you in polygamy? With polygamy, you have all these different wives and things like that. They're all going to be fighting each other, vying for attention and things. You'll never have the time to get to know that one woman that God intends in a biblical marriage. Polygamy in the Old Testament never once worked out. It's always miserable. Let me show you another example of that because he gets into the thing of Jacob. So let's let's look at Jacob here. So we see the greatest polygamist failed and said it, it was terrible. You know, he couldn't even find one good woman among all those that he had married. But let's go to uh, Genesis 30. Let's read here a little bit. And Rachel, and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, this woman that he loved and worked 14 years for, thought he was working for seven years, and then he gets Leah, the older sister, which was his true wife, by the way. I'll show you that in a minute. And then he has to work another seven years, and he gets Rachel. Works 14 years for her and gets anger, angry at her. And he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. And therefore called she his name Dan. I can say a lot about that too, the thing of Dan and what happened there, but... Uh, God wasn't real pleased with that, all right? But over and over and over again, we're not going to read down through all this stuff here, but it's just arguing and fighting and, and jealousy and bickering back and forth and, and just fighting all the time in this polygamous relationship. It was terrible. Um, uh, verse 30, or chapter 30, verse 14, And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrake, mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Yeah. She was the real wife of Jacob, not Rachel. 
And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, thou, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. What a wonderful marriage. You know, why would you even want this? Why would you want more than one wife? And, you know, it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And they're fighting. And notice Rachel did not say to, Le to Leah, hey, what do you mean you're a husband? He's mine too. Uh, no, she knew. She knew the truth. Jacob had one wife, Leah. Right? And I'll grant you it was dirty, the trick that, you know, their father did and stuff to him, you know, uh, that, you know, he gave her, gave him Leah and stuff like this when he had originally consented to, oh, yeah, I'll give you Rachel and whatever. Dirty trick, but the whole point I'm trying to make here is it's polygamy. It doesn't work. Never has, never will. This guy here is a sex pervert. He's not a Bible-believing Christian, and thankfully, the sister that wrote to me said no to this guy and just get away from me. And I would suggest that you do the same if you're a, a saved Christian lady out there and some guy tries to get you into a polygamous relationship. Absolutely unscriptural. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.